To be a 20th century publisher was to be many things at once, to perform multiple tasks for writers. The publisher, I would argue, had, and in most cases still has, 10 distinct core responsibilities or roles. First, a publisher was, and, and in this section, please stop me if anything's not clear. I would presume tremendous intelligence and knowledge. I think that's right to go. First, a publisher was an investment banker, providing some capital to a writer in the form of an advance against royalties in order that they might forego at least some of the need to earn money from other non-literary work and therefore complete the book at hand sooner. Even if this sum was rarely enough to feed a family for a year, there is now. The author's contract was the publisher's working capital. Secondly, the publisher was a curator, selecting work of a certain standard, thereby setting and enforcing minimum standards, decreeing, in effect, what was publishable, even if one publisher might disagree vociferously with all the other publishers about gauging that, which allowed for a real biodiversity in what was deemed publishable in any one market at any one time. A publisher was obviously, furthermore, an editor, working with writers to ensure that the work they published together was just as good as it could conceivably be, by challenging, reordering, rewriting, sympathizing with, and objecting to a writer's proposed text, over and over again, if necessary. A publisher was then also a typesetter and designer, lending the author's work, their expertise, in the art and craft of text layout and jacket design, and in indexing and proofreading to give the work an appropriate visualization. A publisher was a salesman, convincing all those participants in the chain that took a book to its market, that theirs was an essential book to stock, to notice, and to push. Before the arrival of online retailing and e-books, convincing bookshops to display books prominently was demonstrably key to a book's chances of sales success. A publisher was also a credit controller who worked doggedly to get all sales revenues logged and banked on the author's behalf to make people pay what they owe the writer for the opportunity to read their writing to badger the recalcitrant payers relentlessly. A publisher was a warehouseman who printed, stored, tagged, transported and returned multiple copies of an author's work, usually in the thousands so that it might be readily and locally available to booksellers, librarians, and consumers. A publisher was a promoter who blanket bombed, badgered, cajoled, and seduced the broadsheet newspapers, the monthly magazines, public radio and TV culture editors, prize committees, festival directors, and universities to pay attention to a writer's achievements so that the wider world might come to be aware of the book's existence. A publisher was an intellectual property lawyer, even if such a title didn't exist until most recently, responsible for policing any infringement of an author's copyright to protect both their incomes and also for combating piracy and plagiarism of all sorts. And, of course, a publisher was, often most crucially and most continuously, a nursemaid, a counsellor and a crutch a beacon of faith and a rock of security for the practitioners of one of the most precarious of all trades, that of the professional writer, which Jack Kerouac, amongst others, regarded as the loneliest job in the world. So, in short, a publisher has traditionally had at their disposal to offer to their writers the following. Cash, editorial expertise, brand authority, sales clout, design artistry, accounting and legal training, prize eligibility, the ear of the media, spreadsheets, forklifts, lorries, an analyst's couch, and a nurse's bedside manner. 